Okay, what are we doing? Okay, what I'm doing is a stainless steel spoke kit for Buchanan. Do you like Buchanan spokes? Yep. They're nice. Cost a lot, but they're good. These are stainless. God, they're beautiful. What are we looking at here? Uh, These are raw stainless, not polished. These are uh, 250 for 80 of them, huh? Yeah, they were. These are supposed to be raw, but they look a little bit shinier than just bone raw. But see how it's pretty raw looking uh, here. I like them. These here look a little shinier than normal raw. But yeah. So there's 40 per wheel. I think this was 250 bucks, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. Something like that. Probably warning shit to read. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that. You did read all that, didn't you? I didn't get a chance to yet, but I will. Here's another one to read. That's very important. Buchanan's where? California. Okay. No, I know. They're somewhere where, around L.A., aren't they, or something? Oh, uh, Camarillo or someplace. Camarillo? Camarillo? Yeah, Camarillo. North. Okay, we got two bottles of lube. Okay. One for each set. Lube is very important. Okay, now, before you put these together, you got to get your hub figured out where it's going to go. Now, if you put your hub like this and start spoking it, the spokes have to go down a real heavy angle, which they will not work that way, because they're not supposed to be at a heavy angle. You know, they're not made to go like this. They're supposed to be almost flatter. So make it easier for you to go like this, and then see, this comes out right into the wheel. Otherwise, you have to shim this up a little bit. Gotcha. So just do it this way. It's easier. Okay, the next thing is you got to figure out which way the spoke fan goes. Now, the spoke fan is the angle that the spoke makes when it comes through all these holes. So if you take a group of spokes, just grab, a, grab six holes in a row. Don't count the valve stem hole now. Two, four, five, six. Okay. Being a dumbass, dumbass. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm doing this for your convenience, not mine. All right, I got you. Okay, we're figuring out the spoke fan. Yes. Any idea what's going on? Sure. Okay, now you take them and push with your fingers. You notice how the spokes go exactly where they want to be on a hub. Right, mm hmm. Now the fan is what this cross is. That's a fan. You got an upper fan and a lower fan. Okay. Or if you want to go this direction, you got a left and a right. Okay. Now, when you stick them like they want to sit in the rim, because these were this rim was drilled for this application. You know, see how they naturally want to go right here? Right, right. You notice how the, how the hub is made? Right. It's made to be wide like that. That's how you know the, the rim was made for the, the hub. Okay. Okay, the other thing you notice is that the right side is leading the left side. Okay. So it's one spoke ahead, which is important when you go to put your hub together. Okay. So, I'm going to put that back down. So for your convenience, we'll go ahead and do this again. Okay, so now it's laid out. Looks like it's going to sit on the bike. Boom. Now, when you put your spokes in here, you have to decide which spoke leads which side. Now, you can put this together four different ways, it'll still work, but if you want to make it exactly right, okay, which one's ahead of the other? The bottom. Correct. So this is this is one side in front of this side. Yes. And which way was this? Uh, the top is ahead. The top is ahead. So it's the opposite way. Mm-hmm. So we got to turn the rim over. Doesn't matter. You put the rim the same way. Okay. That's how it's made. So what are we going to do? When you put the spokes in here and, and put your fan down, you need to make sure that you turn all the spokes so. 
this spoke here is going to be in front of this one for the same direction. Oh, I so see. This okay. This one's going this way. This one here doesn't go that way. Oh, I got you. Going this way. Okay. So when you lay them all out, the pattern would go like this, and you just go all the way around. Okay. So once you figure out which way the two spokes go, the thing will lay out perfectly fine. Okay. Pre-lay it all out on the table, and then you put the rim down. Okay. So that makes it easily easier. So we can do that on this one over here. Okay. So, huh. Well, there's a lot to this. So that eliminates a lot of confusion. And usually about 60 or 70% of the time I do it backwards every time I pre-lay it out. But it comes out right. Oh, you just have to flip it around when you, when you do the other half. Oh, okay. Okay, now this here is special high-pressure lubricant. You want to put this on your nipples, or on your spokes here. And this feels like it's not open yet. Or it's, you got to cut the tip. Well, you got to poke the tip. So you to poke. You got a poker? No, I do not. I have nothing. You don't have nothing? No poker? Here at Tatro Machine, we don't mess around. It's a good thing I got a hand drill already got made you, up got for you. applications like this where I need something. It's easy to just have a darn paper clip laying around. Being me though, I got I actually use a drill bit. Nice. It's probably too small. So it works, so it's all right. Yeah, as long as you lose it. It's probably for doing car bigs, though. Okay, now the grease might come out or we might need a bigger hole. Bigger. Looks like me like we need a lot bigger hole. Why don't you just cut the tip off? Because then it'll make a huge mess. Well, you don't have to press on it too hard. Yeah, but I have to make a big mess. I don't like making big messes. But I don't have time to go get a bigger girl, so... Cut your tip off for you. You happy? <laughs> it's still a pretty small hole. Still isn't coming out. <laughs> You're gonna have to cut off more tip. I did cut out a big tip. Is the blade? Well, I know the hole goes all the way through. Yeah, but the hole through the whole thing is the same size. Yeah. Let me get a bigger drill. So for basically three bucks and change a spoke. See, this is the bigger version of the other one. Oh, yeah. Big drill, bigger chuck. Same thing, though, see. Oh, hate it when that happens. It's all right. A big enough hole now? I'm hoping so. Yeah, we got it reamed down now. Look at that. That yeah. ought to flow some fluid through it. So for basically three bucks and a so change. It only took five hundred dollars to get a hole. Yeah, in yeah, thing. I can tell. That's a beauty. Uh, you got all brand new spokes. For That's pretty. Well, for three bucks and change a spoke. Oh. Okay. For stainless, how can they make those for that? They make them by the thousands. That's well, what whatever they make them by, they're certainly worth having. I got a little bit too much grease on that first one. And then I overlap them like that so you don't get your table all dirty. Okay, now the reason you got to lubricate this is, is because they will stick. Well, and stainless has a tendency to gall up too, doesn't it? Stainless galls up a lot. And steel on stainless will, steel, will gall up too. And if you don't lubricate it, you'll have a problem. So I don't know how much grease we got here, so we're gonna go ahead and put a bunch on here. 
because this is all stainless on stainless. It's better to have too much than not enough. Now, if you don't have this fancy grease here, you can use a, like a high plate gear oil, a nice thick oil. You could use a, a high pressure grease. When we took those apart, they sure didn't come apart, did they? They were had high pressure rust in them. Yeah, yeah, they were like pretty much rusted. Somehow, and I thought those we were going to be able to use those wheels. Well, we could have used them, but the, everything we touched was bad. They were junk. Completely junk. But I spent a lot of hours showing you how to save them. Well, the rims were square, the spokes were junk, the nipples were rusted. Not good. And the owner's ugly, but what else is there? Well, I, that was a given before we got started here. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so how many of these do I got to do like this? Uh, 40 per wheel. 40? So yep, like 80, 80 total. 80 total, okay. That sounds exciting. So we're gonna highlight what we're gonna do, or we're just gonna come back later. Well, let's uh, let's get these oiled up, and we'll be back. We'll be back. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're gonna start loading the spokes into here. You know, how those going real easy that way, but they don't fit that way with the shit. Mm -hmm. So this is the direction you load. Come around and get the other side over here. So it's really pretty easy. It only really goes one way, right? Yeah, pretty much. The upper ones you might be able to go both ways. So. The lower one, it's the hub is offset a little bit. See, this one won't go in that way, but it's in that way just fine. Now this style rim, you, do, you can actually load one spoke at a time if you want. And do the whole project. I'll show you how to do it that way too. That'll be the other wheel. I usually like to load them all up at one time. The disc brake hubs, you have to do it the other. You have to put everything in on, on those. Look at that. That's great stuff. Better idea the contrast and spokes between the paint and the Oh yeah, I like it. You notice how the screws and the spokes match Oh man, it looks good. They're they're semi shiny, but they're not they're not bright. Old bikes are supposed to be dull, not shiny. Unless you spend a lot of money on your bike and you're real proud of it. Yeah. They well, still aren't supposed to be shiny. Well they look like crap on the other. Since I'm buying, I can have it the way I want. This isn't shiny. It's just no, this looks f freaking good. This is just bright. It's not shiny. Yeah. Bright's chrome and everything. No, nah, I'm not into that chrome. Nice showy. Mild Fred's deep, into chrome. Mild not, deep gloss paint. No. Oh, no. Chrome everything. All that money on that. Whose motor is that on the way behind there? Who's yeah, Customer. Oh, man. All polished. Who polished those cases? Not me. Hey, how come we're out of spokes? That's it. We've got, there's 40 of them. We're out of holes, too. Okay. Okay, good. We were, then I was right. Okay, so there's how you hang it. So they're all going out of the way and not binding up with everybody. Nice. We got a tree. Yeah, pretty cool. Make a big mess. Okay, now you get these where they fall down. Okay. So which way the wheel go over here? Uh, what do you mean? The fan was forward. The fan? Yeah. So which one's leading, the inner or the outer? The inner. Yeah. This, one's in, this one's outside of this one. Doesn't really matter which way you go, but 
Like I said, this wheel can go four different ways and still work just fine. It's up to you which way you want to go with which one. So I can either have this one leading or have this one going that way. It doesn't really matter. Well, as long as they're both the same. Yeah, it just it doesn't matter which one goes this direction. Gotcha. It's just when you do it, you got to figure out which way you want to go. So for now, I'm just going to put them all the same way. Get everything going in the same direction for a minute. That we get an idea what you're going to do. Okay, so the upper spokes you got to keep up out of the way of the bottom spokes. Okay, see how they all going the same way right now? Yes. Sweep in the same direction. Yes. On the bottom row. And the top are sweeping the other direction. Okay. Now, which one goes which way? Uh, the uh, top is front, or the inner is front. The the spokes. The inner one is going this direction. Oh, okay. Well, I'm looking at it a different way. Okay. I got you. So, if you look at the inner one here, it needs to be going this direction. So you take the inner one, which is this one, and you go the opposite direction with it. And you can either do that or you can just rotate it. You can actually just rotate the spoke inward a little bit like that and it comes around pretty easy. So every one of these inner ones here go around the other direction. Now it'll work the other way too, but if we're trying to do exactly what that is there, this should give us what we want if I'm doing it the right direction. Sometimes I'm upside down and I can't figure out what the hell I'm doing, I'll do it backwards. That's been known to happen more than once. That's what happens when you bolt it all together, it doesn't quite fit right. So you take it all apart and redo it and it fits good. Yeah. Did you reverse it? So you get your fan going here? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're not scraping up your rim when you're doing it this way. No, it's perfect. And that's it. And every spoke goes as far as it can go. Everyone's going as far as it can go. Right. And the bottom row is underneath the top row. Okay. So now we got that like that. All right. So. Now the angle we're looking at this in this view right now, we're working on this top row next. We just did the other side. Okay. Now I gotta look at the other side and see if I did it backwards because I was looking at the top row when I did this, not the bottom row. We just did the bottom row, which is the left side. Okay, so I wanna make a look at this. Now on this particular wheel, you does it fit together better this way or this way? So you can go either way. Which one fits better? They both fit up pretty evenly either way, I see. That's why it doesn't really matter on the wheel which way you go. See how they both lay on top of each other mm -hmm. pretty easily? Yeah. I'm going to take this one slightly better this other way. Like that. So it's a toss up. So you look at what I just did under here. And on this one here, the inner one is sweeping back. So we have it the correct way. Okay, now we're going to do the top row. Camera, over here. 
I'm trying to understand. Sorry. Yeah, but you're watching the camera. Yeah, all right. I'm sorry. I'm okay. trying to learn. Okay, it's now, hard to see through. This row here, all in my hand. This row here is now going to be this one here. So we're going to pay attention to what we're doing. So this one here is leading this one. And we're going to want the. This inner one is going toward me. So this inner one is going to rotate this direction. And it's going to be in front of the one below it. So we just spoke at. So the one in front of it is here. So see how it's not in front, it's behind. So this one here needs to be in front of this one. So it needs to go the opposite direction with to what I have over there. So this one here is going to have to go this way. This one's going to have to go this way. Did you catch that? See, it's in front of this spoke. See the spoke? Mm -hmm. See how this one's over in front of it? Because that's how it is over here. Understand? Okay. <laughs> you just said okay. Right? I just said okay, but that's all right. I'm watching. I'm trying to comprehend here. This is a bigger puzzle than I thought. You didn't think this was going to be easy? Oh, I, I knew it was going to be tough, but I didn't think it was this tough. But I didn't know. I mean, that, that that's why I said to you. It requires thinking. Well, it requires a lot of experience, too. Remember, it can go to, it can go to way four different ways. So if you want to put it, if you're the other way, it'll still bolt together. Just, I see. Now you're just going to have to. It just won't be perfect. Once you get it all lined up, it's going to just put the spokes through the rim. Yes. Very nice. And screw the nipples in. I, tell you. I see what you're doing. It's wonderful. Okay, the bottom row is going this way. Top row is going this way. I see it. Well, you see your pairs over here? Yeah, I see it. See how this one's leading this one? Yeah. Just like the one over here. Yeah, I see it. Very nice. So you got all your pairs laid up. Now, Harley has a cross four spoke pattern. That means it crosses four spokes. One, two, three, four. I That's see. Do that again. Show that again to the people. Cross four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Cross three would be over here. Okay. One, two, three. Now, some rims are made for cross three. Harley uses cross four. Okay. All right. Now, the more angle you go this way and this way, the stronger the pattern is. Yeah, I see that. When the spoke is straight up like that, it can twist real easy. Right. Mm -hmm. This way here, you got this spoke. Got it's a pulling against. 100% leverage against that one. Yeah. And this one over here has got 100% going that way. Oh, I gotcha. So, it's a very strong uh, setup. So, so, these are a pair. These are how they're going to line up. If you want to pre-lay them up, you can pre-lay them. Could you almost put a tie wrap on them, couldn't you? You could do that if you wanted to. I mean, if you wanted them to stay straight. Yeah, they doesn't have to be. But... Okay, wow. Okay, now you take your, your rim, and you can lay it right over here like this, right on top of those nice nipples, or spokes, I mean. And if you look at it, see, the only one that's even touching is that one might touch. This one is touching right here. See, it's trying to scratch. Yeah. So I just moved it that way just a little bit. Okay. And see, now none of these are touching the rim right now. So right, okay. So you're not scratching the rim up. You're going to scratch it right here. Ah, oh, that's okay. Somebody do that. Okay, we'll, we'll... okay now we got to see where our rotation is. See how the spoke nipple's going this way? Yeah. So we're going to want to catch a spoke coming this direction. Well, you notice how that spoke is underneath all of these four of the spokes it's underneath yeah. of? Yeah. So we don't want to do this one first. So, yeah, okay. We want to come from this direction. So we go over here and find one that's going that way. See, that's not going that way. That one isn't. This one here is going down. This one's going up. So we want this one to go right to there. So you rotate the rim a little bit without scratching against anything until it gets to where you can just get to it. Just go a little bit further. And when you get it just right, it'll go right in there. Wow. And now you just go over here and grab the next one. So when it's four between, huh? It's every fourth one. Every fourth one. 
See how it's all laid up perfect? Yeah. So if you did your layout right. It okay. goes real simple. And see, there's nothing underneath this spoke. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. To keep you from listing it. And see, you're not spoken, you're not scratching your rim either because you got it laid out. And you're already pretty much centered. Yes. Well, it will be centered because you're it's laid out. Assuming all everything is made correctly. Now, if this rim wasn't matching up the pattern I got, I'd be fighting it. You, you want it being half a hole off, it's going to want to be over here. But wow, we, that's beautiful. Wow. We want to be over here. You know, you just put a couple turns on these, not much, just a little bit. See, we're 180 across, and see, I was only off by like one sure. one little thread there, didn't want to go in. See, I see my pattern off by sure, that far. Sure. So I'm just going to move it, just flex it a little bit. That one's fighting me a little bit, but there it goes. You see all the spokes on the bottom, they're laying flat. Yeah. Now, this one here is in the wrong spot a little bit, so I'm going to pick the rim up just slightly. There we go. Okay, so we got a quarter of it done. Ha! Huh. Nice. Okay, now we do the next one. See how it lays right up to it? See how it lines up? This one's right here, see? I learned a lot. That's pretty cool. You see, they drilled the rim for this spoke pattern, so see how things are kind of lining up halfway close? We're not fighting it too bad. You think these remade rims are better than the originals? They're a lot thicker than the originals. I'm guessing they're a better rim. I don't know about the heat treating. Harley stuff was all heat treated in the old days. They're thicker, but it's thicker doesn't mean stronger. If the rim is heat treated and thinner, it'd be stronger and lighter. Okay, so you see how it all lays up sure. evenly? And sure. I figured it would be a real challenge to get it going, but you got it all lined up. And I didn't screw up on one. No. No, we still don't know if the bottom's lined up correctly. If it's lined up correctly, the spokes are lined up right now. Right, if right. I'm, if I'm 180 out, then I'm, I'm screwed up. I got Where did going. we find one of them had a rim lock in it, didn't it? Or no? Or no, we've got a valve stem. you got to make sure you don't pick up the valve stem, huh? I haven't found that yet. There's the valve stem. Okay. Okay, good. I, I remember seeing it. Okay, but... now if I did it correctly, when you pull up one of those spokes, it should go right into the rim. So here's our valve stem hole. Right. See that spoke lane right down right. there right now? Should go right in. Right in? Yes. You get the one that's on the top. If you try to bring up a bottom one, you gotta pick up three other spokes, so. Somehow I had an idea that you lace these up in the vertical position on the stand. But that doesn't make any sense. I vertical, see now. Vertical is extremely hard. Oh, I can imagine. You're fighting gravity and everything else. Fighting gravity, yes. And here you've got it. Man, that is cool. And like you said, if we'd have had the hub the other way. Okay, now they have spoke on the bottom. Right. See, they bring it up and it's right, got the other right where it should be. And that's because I laid it out correctly to begin with. And it's pretty well centered. Yeah, it'll be... Well, Boy, I if like... If everything is made right, it'll be centered up pretty close. I like the contrast a lot. And this one here, I'm fighting a little bit, but that's because the rim's too low. Right. See, the rim should be about... Right, here. right. I got you, sure. So I'm fighting it just a little bit on the, that angle. hurts you a little bit. But then from here, then you go to vertical, right? And that way you can wiggle it right or left. Yeah, well, when you're trimming it, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and pick up this direction. And this one here, I'm fighting for some reason. Okay, I'm going to do the other one. The reason I'm fighting a little bit right now is because the, the rim is too low. See how it lines up a little bit? Right, better. sure. 
these spokes are uh, slightly long and slightly off. They're not quite loaded the same right this second, but when you raise the rump a little bit, it lines up. It takes up that extra length you need. See when you lower the rim back down. Yeah. See right now we're about a quarter. They get too long. long. Yeah. We're about a quarter too long. Sure. So we just pick the rim up. When you get to the right spot, you bring it up. Right in. Wow, that's nice. Now the angle's not right, so you got to lift it up again to get the angle in there, and then it just then it lines up perfectly. And see, we're still not really stretching the rim up on anything. No, we haven't done anything. See, the spokes are all just laying here on the bottom. They're not on top of the rim. You have to do that stupid taping up every stupid thing because you don't know what you're doing. See those two there? Just the two ones. Yep. Mm, let me see what I did here. This one's the first one. I'm gonna make a shirt and screw myself there. You're all right. We're getting close. I'm running out of nipples. Yeah. Oh, that one's under the ring there. So it's done all the way around there. We got this one over here. Okay, so there it is. Now, if you did everything right, the hub should be pretty well centered up in the rim, and these should all be equally through. If you have ones where there's, they're like this, then that means you're you're off, right. You're off. A, a I think you're right. I think you got it all. You're off one position over here. Yeah. If you like that. Oh wow, boy, that's pretty nice. Huh. This one's in a little bit of a bind for some reason, but I'm not sure why. The spokes all show there and they're good, but fighting a little bit, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Something's not happy. How about if you turn it over the other way and it naturally adjusts itself? Uh, Laid it down to the other opposite side. No, it's something's not happy with me. It looked good, but it's not happy. See, so it wants to be over here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to be where it's supposed to be. Is it? So that means I am off. One of these needs to be flipped. One side needs to be under and flip, under, flip them over this way. See, so even though it laced up good, it's, it's not happy. Yeah, you're right. I can see. So it needs to go this way more. Sure why it's doing that, but something is not happy. See these spokes right here, the binding right here. Yeah. Oh well, maybe that's it. The nipples aren't in enough. Yeah. So that's what's holding it. It could be something's binding it. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and run the nipples in until they're even here. Okay. And let's see if the binding goes away. If in other not, words, you just cover the threads. Yeah, if it doesn't go away, then I'm going to have to take the wheel apart, just one side, and flip the spokes the other direction. And just one, one notch out. See, I'm tightening. A lot of times you just do these by hand, but I think we're fighting it here a little bit still. I don't think it's happy with me. I got a feeling it's going to be right because it looks right to me. I think it's off. 
It's already fighting itself pretty heavily. See how the hub is centered and it's crossed in here right now? Yeah. It doesn't want to go back. Yeah, but you got here, you're on the outside of the nipples here, though. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. That things aren't centered up like they're supposed to be. Something is not happy with what I did. Bringing these nipples in is not fixing the problem. So, whatever it is, it is not pleasantly surprising me. You want to go to the other one? No, I want to find out what's wrong with this one because everything I did, it should have lined up perfectly, but it doesn't matter what it's supposed to do. It's not doing it. So that means we need to work on it. Put much of a screwdriver slot in these things either. And it's definitely binding up quite a bit. So if it's binding, it's no good. I'm going to have to undo all these nipples, but for now I'm going to go ahead and do this one side up. And then that ought to show me what the problem is. Hopefully. It could be the rim is drilled at the wrong angle, or, or it could be I'm just screwed up. I think I'm just screwed up. So right now I'm getting a lot of binding going on right here. Buchanan made the spokes. Who made the rims? Indian. In where? Costa Mesa. Yeah, these are Kiwi made these rims. Kiwi? Yeah, they're made for Indians. I think it was Kiwi or Starklight. Have you been to that? Starklight. Yeah, Starklight's a big Indian dealer. Yeah. You work with those folks before? No, I got these from Buchanan. Oh, I mean the rims. I got the Buchanan. Oh, okay. I understand. Okay. They sell them for. They will work for Hurley or Indian. I didn't it's understand. Just, I see. It's just how you drill them. They come and drill, and they drill them to fit. I don't know if the problem is the drilling or the problem you put it together. All I know is there's a problem right now. So I got all of this one side or all the way in to flush. And you see how the hub is still in here sideways, like it's not supposed to be. Something is wrong. So now I'm going to take all of these spokes out. Hopefully I can get these all out. This is the part we screw up your rim. It's going to come out perfect. I know it is. I'm a believer. You're a believer? Yep. Nice I got the best working on it. Where's he at? <laughs> He's right standing right there. The biggest thing about these things is when you think there's, you know, when there's things don't seem right. You don't keep forcing it, you go back and right. figure, what goes figure it out. So right now we're binding pretty heavily, so
Looks like the spoke angles are a little off. I polished a lot of chrome wheels, and that strikes me as that's how they were. Okay. I don't want to scratch this rim up, so I'm going to pull these spokes out of here. This falls into how I was going to do the other wheel, for show you how the other wheel is going to do it. So you do one spoke at a time. I haven't had to do this in years, I haven't to go back and redo this. So, something is wrong. Didn't we do that by just picking up? Yeah, but I can't do that right now. The spokes are all, all these other spokes are in there tight. Gotcha. The reason that's not going is because the hub is tweaked like this. All this stuff is just bound up real heavily. It shouldn't be either. That's the thing. You gotta pull all these spokes out. See these all should just come right out. You got an eighth of half an inch there. I know. I can't move the hub that far. But you're all hung up on these lips here though. Look. There, that'll help some, huh? That's why it wasn't coming. Oh, I still have one spoke in. That one nipple was still in there. And one nipple I didn't see was still in there and it was hung up on that edge. Okay. Now what you do is you take your nipples and you center your hub up by pushing on the ends. See how these are equally spaced right now? The depth on them? Mm -hmm. So you do that on both sides of the wheel. You know, this way and this way. That centers the hub up. We're flat on the table, obviously. Okay, now we take our spoke and we see what the hell's going on. See, right now it lines up where it's supposed to be. Right. It does not line up over here, see? Gotcha. So I had it the right direction. Well, I don't understand why it's binding up. I wondered if they're just hung up on that lip. I'm thinking what the thing is, the angle of the spoke is something wrong with it. But see, it looks like it's correct angle. Boy, it sure does. But why am I fighting it so much? Now, right now, we are slightly lower than we need to be. So this needs to come up a little bit. So we'll put something underneath here. So give me that little board right there. And then I want to put a shelf up high. Okay, let's see if our hub is now duplicated exactly where it needs to be. Now we're too high. Yep.
Yeah, we're only up about a quarter inch off. So it's only going to come up a quarter inch to be right on the money. So that's all this is off by. So give me those two pieces of thin wood right there. Hold this. Do, do, do. I'm going to watch him work his butt off over there to get two pieces of wood you can't oh, they're make. jammed in there. They're jammed in there. You didn't know what you were doing? about center now. Okay, double check our spoke. Make sure angle's good. Angle's good. See how it still lines up where I had it. When you go over this other side, see how see how this angle? It's wrong. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Can you see it through the camera? Yes I can. See how the nipple's gonna yeah. mm -hmm. So I had it the right direction. Now what the hell's it binding up on? I don't know. Because obviously that is the correct angle. But for some reason, it's bottom. <coughs> that easy means that the the, drim, the rim is not drilled for your hub. It's easy what that means. Yeah, but it wouldn't have gone together that easy. Well, I know that it's not correct. back together the same way we took it apart but maybe there's something binding up I couldn't see now this is how you do it one spoke at a time so you put it in there and you go around until you line up and then you assemble see so I have to move the rim a lot to get it in there Watch this whole thing go right back together and work just fine. <laughs> I got a feeling. But we know how it wasn't working. Okay, those are all in. So we got three rows of spokes in, huh? Okay, now I'm just taking my fingers and all kind of Get them all so they feel like they're about equal. They all look fairly equal. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this row here. So I'm going from this direction this time. Okay. It goes right where it's supposed to. I've never built one any of these, but I like that one spoke at a time deal. On these rims, you can do that. On this brake yeah. rims, you cannot do. I'm it. just saying. I mean, we'll do the other one that way. It's real time. self. It's real straightforward doing it one at a time. These, the old Harley rims are the easiest. Rims yeah, I was to gonna do. say because just watching you line them up, I mean, you just mm -hmm. count them off. Four different ways it will go together. All right. Well, we've got two done. We did two then. No, I'm putting it right back. No, I got gotcha. you. The way it came apart, no, it did I did not can't. work. It's going right back together, and it's lining up right now. So, so far, I think, and I'm again, I don't know, but for the fact that there's just enough for you to get the spoke through the rim is a pretty in good indication that it's going right, isn't it? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's uh, it, it's a it's, natural. It's, it's all laying up right now. But I don't know what the problem was before. The only difference is I'm, I'm a quarter inch Yeah, you're a quarter. <laughs> yeah, I've got you. 
A quarter inch shouldn't be enough to make any difference. A half inch would make a difference. An inch definitely makes a difference. But it's an identical pattern I already used. So I just don't know what the hell it is. It doesn't matter if I don't know what it is, as long as it works. Both nuts that are laying the spokes out works too. It's just for whatever reason this one didn't like it the first time we did it that way. It might be a fact because everything's brand new and the, the spoke holes are sharp edge and the nipples are sharp and they grabbed and bound and I didn't touch the blind spot. That's always possible. We'll know here in a minute though, because this is the last one. See everything's lining up. Just like it should be. See, that's how it's supposed to be. Yep, I gotcha. What the hell's different? Uh, not a damn thing. Not a damn. But, but it liked it better. But yeah. obviously, there's a hundred percent of something different. Yeah, because it's together. I gotcha. Wow, okay. that little eighth-inch board helped that. No, no, because. Well, something. Shit, shit. How could it be that cantankerous? I don't know. Something is binding. Well, it likes it now. Yeah. Here, you, here, you're second guessing yourself. Well, something was wrong. No, you're right. I could see it wouldn't go. So, whoever wants to play back the video back and forth and watch that hour and a half, because it's going to be a long video, and tell me what the hell I did wrong, because I don't know. It's laid out exactly how I did it the first time. I'm putting the spokes in the same spot. This is initial roughing it in. Now, if spokes are made correctly, the nipple will overhang these spokes by at least an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths up. So you won't see any threads. That's if you got the correct amount of thread engagement on your nipples. Sometimes you can't get that much. And when everything's made right, that's how it is. And ideally you don't want to have an eighth of an inch to cut off on the other side because the spokes are too damn long. Right, right, right. Because that's a lot of damn work grinding. That's what that uh, paper says. So we grind them off or yeah. don't do it. Well, if you, you can't have, you shouldn't have any more sticking out through the inboard side of the nipple. Well, if it sticks out, it'll pull close to your tube. Yeah, right. Well, that's why they suggested grinding it off. Okay, so I am now all in the same distance all the way around. And you can see how it's nice and free. Yeah. And it's not twisted and bound up like no, it was. No, just like it should be. That's how it should be the first time. So we're just trying to make a better video. Yeah, okay. I, I had it all planned. No, well, that's pretty good. Okay. So you got that much more spoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, there's no binding. That's how it should be. There's no binding. Right. It likes it. Okay. okay. Nice. Make it easy to true up. See, right. even if you had to spoke like that, so right. it would true, it would bolt together. Right, right. right. This is the way it should be because it's closer to being what real world is. Okay. Real world right here. But, uh, all right, well, that's how you do that. Wow. I'm going to show the next one. Okay. I thought this video would do another one. Nice.